Okay, let's start. Um, I hope that you can see my screen. We are with uh, about 20 people, I think, at the moment. That was quite a good attendance. Um, for those of you who have never been using uh, Zoom before, it's, uh, it's quite easy to use. Uh, if you go uh, to the bottom of your screen and you and you see a few buttons. Um, you, one of these buttons uh, is um, participants buttons. If you click that, you can see the participants. And um, uh, if you click that one, then you can also uh, raise your hand if you want to, uh, to speak, if you want to say something. Uh, you can also just um, uh, use the chat, uh, the chat um, button as well. Uh, and in the chat, you can also just um, uh, type something like uh, slash hand if you want to, to speak. Um, other than that, I uh, would like to ask uh, everybody uh, to uh, mute yourself uh, as much as possible. Um, there's also a button for that. Uh, that's the most left button, if I'm correct. Are there any questions on using Zoom? No? Okay. Um, there is a, I, I created the document for, for the notes and I would like to ask everybody to, um, uh, to open that document. Uh, it's uh, the link bit.ly uh, slash BDI uh, interest group P15. Um, Maybe you can all Could start. you copy paste that to the chat so that we can yeah. click? Um, I, I pasted that in um, already. You pasted in already, okay. So if you can uh, all start uh, entering your name in that uh, document, and um, if we can collect collectively uh, add notes to that document, it will be uh, will be nice. I structured that document a little bit um, in the sense that uh, I, I created a few uh, paragraphs in the document um, so that we can uh, create notes of, on specific items that will be useful later on if we are going to create uh, a chapter. Um, group is not too big, so uh, let's do a quick round of, of introductions. Um, Let's start with uh, with Hanna. So if you can just say one sentence who you are, which country you're from, which affiliation. So my name is Hanna Koivula. I currently worked, uh, work in Finnish Environment Institute as a project manager. And my very new task is to establish a service to the Institute for supporting our researchers opening their da uh, research data as part of the research project. Okay, Libby. Hi, Libby Elwood. I'm with iDigBio in the United States, and um, interested in some of the future. The guys you talked the things you guys are talking about moving forward with um, things we are all working on together with. Um, um, uh, yeah, data and uh, sorry, it's pretty early here in California. Um, still working on my coffee, but um, yeah, happy to be joining you guys. Thanks. See that? Hi, I'm Caesar. Uh, I'm a senior scientist working on uh, agriculture research. I am interested in data, uh, open data, and I'm also working for that in my organization. Uh, trying to put some uh, the advocacy policies and everything, and I'm in really involved in RDA since long time, but uh, not a uh, good contributor. But being in this firm, I should I'll be doing it for this bioinformatics, uh, biodiversity informatics. Uh, thanks to water to get connecting all these things. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Dimitris. Hello everyone, I'm Dimitris Krius, uh, DISCO um, RDA Technical Advisory Board. 
uh, Naturals Biodiversity Center and one of the most silent co-chairs of this group. Okay, Sarah. Uh, hi, my name is Sarah Ramdeen. I'm at the Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory in Columbia University in New York. Um, I work on a project called CESAR, the System for Earth Sample Registration. Uh, but what we deal with is unique identifiers for physical samples. And there's been a lot of growth into other domains uh, to use that. And so I'm interested to see what's going on in biodiversity. Okay. Alex? We cannot hear you, Alex. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm Alex Hardesty from the School of Computer Science and Informatics at Cardiff University in the UK. Uh, and I'm one of the technical architects for the DISCO research infrastructure, the Distributed System of Scientific Collections, which is a, a European research infrastructure. Okay. Uh, Klaus? Yeah, hi, Klaus Wallang from the Senckenberg Nature Research Institute in Frankfurt, uh, Germany. I'm group leader for Senckenberg Database and Knowledge Systems Group, and um, I'm also involved in the technical infrastructure of uh, DISCO and IPES. Okay, Sandra? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, my name is Chandra Burkhazer, and I'm from the European Expel, uh, located in Hamburg, Germany. And uh, I'm the head of the uh, Open Scientific Computing Group there. Okay. Donat? Hi, I'm Donat Agosti from Plaatsi in, in uh, Switzerland in Paris. Um, we are interested in liberating data from publishing, published, uh, uh, from publications and we are running the Biodiversity Literature Repository at Zenodo, and we are interested in legal issues. Okay. Uh, Tanya? Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Tanya, and I work at the Helsinki University Library as like, um, I advise people with uh, data management and opening their data in the Faculty of Science and, and Biology and so on. Okay. Uh, Rebecca? I am Rebecca Koskala uh, from the US. I'm here as co-chair of the Metadata Interest Group to um, stay aware of what's happening in the Biodiversity Group. Okay. Maria? Hi. I am Maria Alejandra, I am a PhD student uh, in Brazil, and I am working with individuals. And so I'm interested in databases and information from individuals. That is really difficult to use because that is, there are a lot of, of information that we can use together. So I'm interested in that. Okay. Uh, Joachim. Hi, I'm Joachim Philipsen from Stockholm University Library. Uh, I'm not a specialist in uh, biodiversity data. Uh, I'm more of a generalist, a research data analyst and curator or manager. Uh, but I've been, uh, I have a, 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 an individual interest in biodiversity and I've been to TADWIG conferences the last three or four years so I recognize a few people from there on this list here. Glad to be here. Um, Andre? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. <clears throat> so I'm uh, Andre Eugebart. I'm uh, working in Belgium as a GBIF node manager. And I'm also a member of the EOSC FAIR work group. Okay. Lawrence Didier. Hello, I am uh, working in a agricultural research center and I am uh, head of uh, the support team for scientists working with research data management. 
So I am interested in biodiversity, standard, and interoperability. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Lawrence Lenham. Thanks. Uh, my name is Larry Lanham, uh, CNRI in the U.S., uh, associated with digital object architecture, uh, manage the DOI infrastructure, and uh, I'm on the DISCO uh, Technical Advisory Board. Okay. And Nelson? Hi, I'm Nelson Rios. I'm at the Yale Peabody Museum in New Haven, Connecticut, United States. I'm head of biodiversity informatics and data science. Um, my interests here probably have to do more with data integration and what kind of new developments are coming in the pipeline over the next couple of years to improve how we share data. Okay. Hi, Mo. Hi, my name is Heimer Reiner. I'm from the Naturalism Museum in Vienna. Uh, running a platform for botanical uh, object data, a uh, platform named Chuck. It's about 40 institutions putting in. I'm, uh, you know, I, I attended since 2004 almost every TEDWIC meeting, and I'm DISCO NTF for Austria, so I'm um, interested in all these research data uh, developments. And we are engaged now, also recently became engaged recently with the European Open Science Cloud activities in connection with the Austrian uh, Ministry of Sciences. Okay. Uh, in addition. Hello, um, I am Anne and I am at Oregon State University. I work on semantic technology and uh, data integration. Um, my first discipline is biodiversity, but I'm working on integrating not just biodiversity data, but other types of data with biodiversity data. Okay. Deborah? Hello, everyone. I'm Deborah Drucker from Embrapa, which is the Brazilian agency for agricultural research. I am a data manager at Embrapa Informatics, one of our research centers. And I am also involved with the Brazilian platform on biodiversity and ecosystem part and services. And we are doing a lot of effort on mobilizing uh, data, biodiversity data in Brazil. And also together with Walter and other colleagues, we are at the task force for knowledge and data of the IPVIS. Okay. Uh, Falco? Hi, my name is Falco Lokla. I'm from the Natural History Museum in Berlin, and I'm head of the department Science Data Management. Um, I'm pretty much involved uh, in lots of biodiversity uh, informatics activities. Um, the, the DISCO infrastructure and the international uh, consortium for the development of uh, software, open source software uh, um, for the natural history domain, the DINA consortium. Thanks. Okay, uh, Quentin. Hi, I'm Quentin Groom from Meiser Botanic Garden in Belgium. Uh, I also work with Tadwig on biodiversity standards and I'm interested in integrating uh, biodiversity specimens and observations, particularly for invasive species research. Okay, uh, Libby. Uh, hi, sorry, I think I already went, unless there's another Libby, but I'm with uh, I dig Bio in the US working on uh, globalization of uh, biodiversity data. Okay, um, let me see, Constance. Hi, um, I'm, I'm Connie Ronaldo, and I, I'm the chair of the Biodiversity Heritage Library, and we're interested in standards and linking and, you know, what's, what's the latest thing happening in, in um, biodiversity. Okay. Bernat? From, uh, hello, I'm Bernard Comer from uh, uh, France. I've been working uh, 15 years in the Ministry of Research, and the uh, last years I've been involved in the policy for uh, biodiversity environment, and especially biodiversity data, and e uh, GBIF. 
Okay. Uh, Sharif? Uh, hi, everyone. I am Sharif Islam. I'm from the Naturalis uh, Biodiversity Center in Leiden in the Netherlands, and I'm also the uh, data architect for DISCO. Okay. A uh, few more people joined, so um, I probably forgot uh, a few people. So if I forgot you, can you please also introduce yourself? Um, I'm Gil Nelson. I apologize for being late. I am from the United States, and I'm the director of IDIG Bio, uh, the United States Biodiversity Informatics uh, Center. Okay. Okay, I'm Laurence Benichou from European Journal of Taxonomy, and um, I'm involved into the e-publishing working group into the state of I'm based in Paris. Okay. I am Barbara Magania from Environment Agency Austria. I'm uh, involved in ELTA, uh, European Long-Term Ecosystem Research. Um, and I, um, uh, I'm a, a semantic um, expert working on ENFTES, Environment Thesaurus, and I'm leading the working group I adopt that's about interoperability of observable properties descriptions. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, so it looks like we have had everybody. Um, at the beginning of the session, I asked uh, everybody to, uh, to uh, put your uh, name into the notes document. Uh, I will copy paste uh, the link again in the chat in case you missed it. Okay, here it is. So I would like to ask everybody to uh, to put their uh, their name uh, in uh, the documents and um, to also use the document for uh, for making uh, notes about in the meeting. Okay. Uh, let me go back to the agenda. Um, we have uh, uh, some time left for um, updates uh, on developments uh, in biodiversity data integration. So everybody uh, who would, would like to um, give an update uh, on developments that they think is, uh, are relevant for, uh, for this group, uh, you now uh, can have the floor. If you can please raise your hand if you want to speak so that I can see. Uh, Quentin? Yeah, well, I could perhaps mention uh, that Tadwig now has a task group on developing attribution standards for people, and uh, and Thyssen's involved in that as well, and, and that's to do with integrating uh, people into biodiversity data and linking data through people. Mm -hmm. Uh, Anna? So one thing that should probably be mentioned just to orient everyone is that there was a, a an RDA working group that was uh, sort of spun off of this interest group to look at uh, attribution metadata. And um, so that went through its 18 months of RDA participation. It was uh, co-sponsored by TADWIG. And so we have our product at the end of the 18 months of the period in RDA. And now we're sort of taking that up in, within TADWIG to start working on uh, a Darwin core extension. Um, we were going to try to make some progress on that uh, at the next meeting, but that meeting has been um, canceled. So we're, uh, just trying to figure out how we can make progress there. But that's sort of where, where we are. And I'm hoping that we can um, revive this interest group a little bit and maybe spin off uh, another working group. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, what, what kind of working group are you thinking about? Well, I, I don't know. Um, I'm hoping that we can all have some ideas here. And uh, I'm hoping that 
maybe I can take a step back and some someone else can chair uh, chair the new working group. Okay. Um, Quentin again. Sorry, I just forgot to take my hand down. <laughs> uh, okay. Anybody else? Uh, Barbara, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted um, to be here also. I had a bit of problem to follow from the beginning on because these days I'm only in teleconferences and they are overlapping. So I have to learn more about your group, but I want to liaise or I want to, yeah, to understand what you need um, because we are working um, on biodiversity topics too, but uh, more from the semantic uh, um, point of view and uh, would like to let you know what we are doing and also to learn from you what you need. Yeah. Yeah, and probably also to say that, yeah, also give you some hints where we publish of which workshops are on biodiversity, I know. <laughs> so, yeah. semantic for biodiversity, for example, and so on. So, I'm happy to be here and to learn from you and to give you information. Okay. Can you maybe quickly in, in, in two minutes uh, tell a little bit more? Yeah, I adopt. Uh, that's uh, a group already active for two years, um, and there are lots of um, research infrastructures, environmental research infrastructures involved from Europe, but also uh, from Australia um, and uh, the US. Um, so not global yet, but we are <laughs> trying to get um, to reach many uh, other people out there uh, to um, look at how they describe observations um, and measurements, uh, but uh, also other variables um, um, uh, later on in the uh, data life cycle when you, you analyze um, your data and how you describe these. Um, but our focus is really on observer properties, how you uh, how this, um, are, what are the components of descriptions for observer properties and how this is done and which vocabularies you are using. And what we achieve is not to build an, yet another model or yet another terminology, but to see uh, what, are, what is working best and what is missing and address this and then uh, build an interoperability framework which bridges between all these different approaches. And this is ongoing, uh, started in October last year and will last till uh, summer 2021. 20, uh, and we hope and we are in a good way to find uh, common solutions. At the moment, we are looking for terminologies um, used but also annotation practices. And we are looking for user stories. And if you want, I can put some links in the minute so that you can still join this, act, uh, this activity. Um, uh, yeah, it would be nice. Yeah, okay. You can do that. Yes. Okay. Uh, Shrita? Uh, I'm not sure if everybody knows that uh, the India has a, a biodiversity uh, national authority and even all the states have its own state authorities, biodiversity authorities. Uh, how we can uh, connect with them and then uh, get their data integrated for, into the portal or whatever like which we are going to build or which we are going to put in uh, put as uh, in publicly uh, do we have any thoughts like how i can uh, talk to them and then how how the others people are other nations are working on this uh, the national platforms for biodiversity when we have another one uh, non governmental uh, it's a civil society one called india biodiversity portal in which uh, it is mostly on the content management system 
which the people post their photographs and then describe the uh, mostly for the identification uh, but the germplasm at the institutes or the universities or the state biodiversity authorities or the forest department uh, how we are going to I mean, uh, integrate is one uh, is in my mind so probably from this uh, interest group uh, would like to uh, learn something and then talk to them on this yeah okay thanks um barbara sorry it was from before <laughs> um i would like to quickly mention also um catalog of life uh, latest developments um catalog of life is working on a, on an extended uh, catalog service together with uh, with gbif and uh, the reasons for that were that um, catalog of life is is used as a, as the basis taxonomy uh, as a as a backbone in in many infrastructure projects, but because it is not complete, every infrastructure project was um, uh, adding to that uh, to that list to fit their needs, and um, that makes uh, it, the, this approach uh, a, a little bit interoperable because every um, infrastructure ends up with with a slightly different um, taxonomic backbone. Um, and also GBIF uh, was experiencing some pro uh, problems with that because they tried to, to semi-automate um, uh, the, the addition of names that they found in their data to their catalog. Um, and that appeared to not, uh, not work very well because uh, often you need an expert to, to uh, figure out um, whether a name uh, should be added or whether it is a synonym of another name, etc. Uh, and also, um, DBIF is working uh, with with, uh, uh, with with Plasi on, on um, uh, adding uh, names from from literature. Uh, and it would be very nice if these these names, if new names appear in literature, could immediately be added to uh, to Catalog of Life. So that's uh, why um, Catalog of Life is now uh, working on a new infrastructure that would allow um, uh, all experts to uh, to add their names uh, to the catalog um, in addition to to names that are already uh, accepted uh, another uh, development uh, I would like to mention is uh, there is uh, there are a lot of developments currently going on uh, on um, COVID-19 the new uh, the new uh, coronavirus um, there is an, uh, an interest group uh, formed in, in RDA. There is an, uh, a biohackathon uh, being planned for that. Um, so there are a lot of activities uh, going on there as well. And if you would like to join, for instance, that group in RDA or um, in uh, the, the, the implementation group in, uh, in GoFair, um, then you could look at that. Uh, another thing I would like to mention is uh, is DISCO, is a new research infrastructure in, in Europe uh, that now entered the preparatory phase. So um, from uh, from last month, uh, we started with the preparatory phase projects, uh, and in that we, we are going to basically create a blueprint for um, how we would like this infrastructure to be. It's an infrastructure on, on collections in Europe. Uh, and um, one of the things that uh, that we uh, want to do is uh, create some pilot implementations for the infrastructure that we envisage. It's, it's uh, is heavily um, using R RDA uh, recommendations and a fair digital object uh, infrastructure. Um, and we, for that, we are also working closely with with Tetwick. Uh, Tetwick is working on a new standard for collection descriptions, which we uh, will need in that infrastructure. Okay, um, we have time for one more uh, comment, if there's any. No further updates? Okay, then I will share my screen again. Um, 
because I want to to tell you a little bit uh, about the um, uh, the objective of this meet uh, this meeting and um, the uh, the interest group that we uh, that we have and uh, also about RDA because. Uh, in the survey that we have been running a few weeks ago, and maybe you have been participating in that survey, maybe not, uh, we, but in that survey it became clear that uh, a lot of people do not know yet what RDA is. So I will tell you in a nutshell uh, a little bit about that as well. Okay, uh, so the objective for this, this session is to discuss uh, new objectives for, uh, for this interest group. Uh, the interest group is one of the oldest thematic groups in RDA. Um, it's thematic because it's uh, it's for the biodiversity data community. Uh, and over time, uh, the group charter has become uh, become outdated. Uh, it was established in 2013, uh, around the same time that RDA itself was uh, was established. Um, so the group is, uh, was, was recognized and endorsed in 2014. It currently has uh, four chairs uh, spread over three continents. Uh, Hamish, who could not be here because of the, the time of the, the session. Um, Sridhar, who is uh, who's here, um, who is from India. And uh, myself and Dimitris uh, from Europe. Um, and we currently have 157 uh, members, so that's it's quite a big uh, group. Uh, it has been uh, inactive for a long time, but uh, if you see, uh, look at uh, the new members, then you see that uh, recently uh, we we, uh, we got uh, uh, quite a few uh, new members. Um, you can see a spike in in November uh, 2019 when uh, the group was presented in. Uh, uh, GBIF uh, in the uh, global notes meeting and you can see an oil spike uh, more recently in, in the in this month and in the February uh, when we launched um, the survey. Um, so we created the survey and I will um, tell you more about the results of that survey uh, in a minute uh, or a few. Um, so we created that survey to get an idea of, of um, what the current needs are from the community for, for this interest group. Um, this is a sum summary of the current charter. You can find the charter uh, online in the RDA uh, website. Um, currently it's, uh, it's stating that the interest group would like to increase the effecti effectiveness uh, of uh, existing uh, biodiversity infrastructures. Uh, by promoting the adoption of, uh, of common tools and services. Um, so, so to establish uh, a better data interoperability within the domain. And uh, the group uh, envisages that, uh, that this was, uh, the taxon names would uh, provide a key role in, in connecting biodiversity data together. Um, it also described that the members of the interest groups uh, are supposed to collaborate with other uh, RDA working in interest groups um, and it announced a few um, potential working groups that uh, were never established though, as far as I know. Um, and it stated as a general ob uh, objective to make this interest group a sustainable component of the major uh, biodiversity informatics uh, initiatives. Um, a little bit about RDA. Um, let me see, there is an... Uh, okay. um, RDA uh, was, uh, was created in 2013, um, but it quickly grew to uh, over 10,000 members currently. Um, and uh, it is a uh, really global coverage with 137 uh, countries uh, participating. Um, there are 91 interest groups and working groups. Uh, the difference between them is that, uh, that interest groups um, uh, discuss things in general and working groups 
uh, are, are uh, working on uh, creating um, recommendations as, uh, as outputs. Uh, therefore, working groups um, have a case statement what they want to achieve and can run uh, 12 to uh, uh, 18 months uh, maximum to, uh, to create the output that, uh, that they want to work on. Interest groups usually uh, 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 form an umbrella for uh, working groups under the interest group. Um, they asked some questions in the, in the chat uh, whether the charter was ever revised because it's seven years old, but it was never revised before. Um, there are uh, researchers uh, of multiple disciplines in RDA. Uh, it's really multidisciplinary, and I think that's one of the strengths of, of RDA. Um, and it's, it tries to provide a neutral space to develop and adopt uh, infrastructure recommendations in general. Um, the RDA vision is that researchers and innovators openly can share data across technologies, disciplines, and countries uh, to address the current challenges of society. So that's the, that's the overall vision of, of RDA and all the outputs of RDA uh, try to work towards that, uh, that goal. Um, individual membership uh, of RDA is free. So you can just uh, go to uh, the link uh, I displayed in this uh, slides to register and become a member. And once you are a member of RDA, uh, you can uh, also become a member of, uh, of any of the interest and uh, working groups including this one. So if you are here and you are not yet member of the interest group and you would like to become a member, you can uh, just uh, subscribe. So this is now a view of the growth over time of the members and the distribution over the world. And you can see that there is a really global participation, although uh, uh, most of the members are coming from uh, North America and Europe. Uh, but there are members from, uh, from many other countries as well. So what does RDA do? Um, members uh, in RDA come together uh, to self-formed uh, working groups. Um, and, and interest groups uh, to exchange knowledge, share discoveries, and dis uh, create uh, discussions, and um, also explore and define um, policies and tests um, and harmonize uh, standards. Um, together, uh, there are a, a lot of challenges that are tackled in the different interest groups in, in RDA, um, things like data preservation, best practices for domain repositories, metadata, data citation, etc. cetera. Um, so it's, uh, it's 91 groups in total, um, and it's really uh, on all the, the subjects that, uh, that you can think of in this field. So what can these recommendations do for biodiversity data interoperability? Uh, well, together, these, these recommendations really underpin the development of a cross-domain data fabric. That's, that's what, um, what uh, these recommendations will lead to. And um, this data fabric you can see as an architecture and a set of data services that, that will provide con consistent capabilities across domains and across technical solutions. So when you apply this for biodiversity data, then it will allow researchers to openly share biodiversity data across technologies and across disciplines. So um, this can be used to, to share the biodiversity data with other disciplines in science as well, and also across uh, countries. Okay. Um, before I continue, are there any questions about this? If you have a question, can you put it in the chat, maybe? OK. 
Okay, I don't see any questions. Um, so uh, quickly, um, the requirements, requirements of an interest group should be two to four co-chairs. We have that. Um, there should be a balance of expertise and geographic representation of the members. I think we have that as well. Um, we have at least three continents represented in the group. Um, the interest group should provide a platform for communication and coordination around the topic of interest. Um, the group should be techno technology and product neutral. Um, that's important if you are going to work on the charter to keep in mind. Uh, and there should be no overlap uh, with existing uh, interest groups or working groups. Um, the proposed roadmap for, uh, for updating the charter. Um, so we started with investigating the current needs um, for, the, for the group through the survey and uh, discussions like we have today. Um, then uh, the next two months we would like to uh, create a synopsis of these, uh, these uh, results and to create a draft new charter. Um, once we have that, then uh, that needs to go to a three-step uh, review process if we want to uh, do a full uh, group process for the revised uh, charter. It's not very clear in RDA whether we actually need it, but I think it's a good idea to do. That will take two to three months, um, and then we should end up with uh, an uh, endorsed updated charter. Uh, and then we should start creating task groups. A few uh, suggestions for task groups uh, have been mentioned already. So we can uh, start creating them and um, hopefully we can then start working uh, in these task groups uh, uh, at the time that the, the new RDA plenary will take place in, uh, in November. Okay. Um, Anne is asking a question, is there an official definition of task group in RDA? Uh, yes, I think there is. There are some, some guidelines uh, in RDA also to uh, how to create a task group and um, how to uh, create um, a case statement for that. Uh, sorry, I never knew that task group is a real defined. defined working environment. We use task groups in the BSIC, but this was just informal. It was a pre-step for a working group somehow. Yeah, no, there's a, a formal procedure for task groups in the, RDA. For working groups, not for task groups. Uh, working groups, yes. yes. I say task group is a working group. Uh, so for a working group is clear, <laughs> yeah. So we have interest group and working groups. I said task group, that uh, should be a working group. So that's my mistake. Okay. Um, the review process um, has a few uh, steps. Basically, it's a three-step process uh, where first the, the charter will be developed as a draft. Then there is a community review where uh, the whole RDA community uh, can review and com can comment on that. Um, then there is a review by the uh, by the top in uh, in RDA, the technical um, advisory uh, boards, and then there is a council review. Um, so it's a, it's a process with three review steps. Um, we had a discussion on the initial um, survey results already on the 10th of March. Uh, and um, the key recommendations that uh, came from that, uh, that group and the key findings were that the interest group is apparently uh, considered to be a useful tool by the community. Uh, but the group will benefit from refocusing the objectives and better linking with current developments. Um, and more involvement is needed from these uh, infrastructures. And maybe we can uh, discuss later um, how, to, how to create that involvement, uh, which I think is really important. Um, all the recommendations uh, to uh, disseminate the survey more widely, that has been, been done. And uh, we ended up with 94 responses, which I think is quite a lot. 
um, we uh, need to be more specific on how people uh, can uh, ten tangibly uh, contribute to the to the group. Was a was a uh, comment that was made. Um, this could be done uh, be done by forwarding specific documents or ideas so that people can immediately interact. Um, by having more virtual meetings uh, in between plenaries. So we can discuss that as well. Um, and um, there was a statement that the purpose of the group uh, needs to be clear. Okay. So now let's go um, to um, the survey. Results. Okay. So we had um, 14 questions in the survey, uh, plus a question to leave uh, uh, optionally um, an email address. And half of the people uh, left their email address um, uh, because they want to be uh, further involved in the, in the process. Um, so I updated um, these people also about the results of the, of the survey. The survey is uh, publicly available in the, in the RDA um, uh, website. Uh, if you go to the interest group, then you can find it. Uh, it is also available uh, from, uh, from Zenodo. Um, so the first question was, are you familiar already with uh, RDA and its outputs? And uh, about two thirds said, uh, yes, we are. But uh, a large uh, one third said, no, we are not. So we need to take that in, into account with, uh, with further communications. Um, the question, are you familiar with, uh, with this interest group uh, already? And um, uh, actually two thirds was not yet familiar with its, this, uh, this interest group. Um, so we got a lot of, uh, of uh, answers from people who are not currently in this, uh, this interest group, which, is, uh, which makes it very interesting. Um, then there was a question whether you are currently a member of, uh, of this interest group. And uh, you can see that uh, only 20% of the people were uh, already a member. Those, I think a few people um, became a member after filling in this survey. Um, there was a question about attendance uh, that's not relevant anymore. Um, do you see RDA outputs as relevant for your work? And uh, we see that almost everybody answered that, that they see uh, RDA outputs and recommendations as relevant for their work. So even those, uh, Walter, that they didn't know what RDA was? Apparently, yes. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's interesting. <laughs> Uh, there was no option here to uh, to answer. I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe that people had vaguely heard uh, a little bit about it already. I don't know. Um, but uh, it's uh, an overwhelming majority that that sees RDA outputs in general as relevant. Um, this is, I think it's very encouraging for for RDA. Um, although I think RDA needs to work a little bit on um, uh, getting. Uh, known better in the community, at least in this community. Um, then let me see, the next one is this one. Um, there was a question, have you ever been actively involved in development of one or more of the RDA outputs? And uh, actually 25% uh, of the people, so a quarter of the people were have been actively involved in the in development of these outputs in the past. And there was a question whether you are currently a member of the RDA and uh, about one third answered yes. So I guess that one third is also uh, largely the people that answered that they are familiar with RDA, um, but we don't know of course. Um, then the more specific questions uh, for the for the group. Um, do the uh, group description and objectives need to be uh, updated? And uh, a large majority uh, agreed uh, with that. Um, so about uh, seventy percent either strongly agreed or somewhat agreed, and twenty percent had no opinion. 
And there were only three people that said, well, uh, we think that uh, these uh, objectives do not need to be updated. Um, nobody of the, of the people said that they do not see a potential use for this group. And um, also uh, that's important to know. So apparently uh, everybody uh, thinks that this group uh, has a potential uh, use, a potential role to play and is important to have. Uh, it just needs to uh, have an update of the description and objectives. Um, then we ask a question, what should be the primary focus uh, of these interest groups in terms of development of recommendations? Um, and there we see that um, there is um, uh, a lot of people that uh, see uh, data management um, linking data and, and making data findable and um, data description um, are, are the main um, things and the main areas to develop uh, recommendations for. Um, but here the group was, uh, was really uh, divided. Um, so there's also a lot of interest in, uh, in other areas like uh, um, data storage and uh, data collection and, and policies. Um, then we said that currently one in the charter, one of the main objectives of the group is uh, adoption of common tools and services. Uh, but there are more um, ways to establish interoperability. Um, so uh, we listed a few here and um, we asked which ones you see as main important. And here we see that actually this adoption of common tools and services were not seen as, as very important. Uh, only 9% uh, of the people uh, found that uh, the, the, the most important one. Um, there was um, a lot of interest in um, implementing fair, fairness, um, but also uh, wider adoption of biodiversity standards and uh, achieving common protocols and best practices uh, were seen as, uh, as uh, very important objectives for this group. Um, so we need to discuss further, I think, what, uh, what should be the main of the objective of, of the group. Um, I think we, we need to, to narrow it down. We cannot do everything. Um, but uh, yeah, it looks like uh, people are a little bit divided on, on what the group should focus on. Um, there is a comment from Anne. I think we need to be more specific than fair. Um, what will we do to make uh, uh, data fair? Yeah, fair is, uh, that's just implementing fair is very broad, uh, of course. So if we are going to focus on that, yes, we need to be more specific. Um, Joachim uh, said, well, perhaps we can specialize on, on interoperability. Um, that uh, fits the, the, the title of the group at least very well. Okay. I would like to continue. Um, let me find this. So there are a few uh, comments for other objectives that were not listed. Um, one was to accommodate um, biological systematics better. Um, there were some comments that these, these objectives seem to be closely related um, or that all of them are important. Um, there was a comment that we need to make the next step for um, initiatives to converge all around the same foundations, the same foundations of facts. Um, achieving common protocols and best practices for data sharing. Um, yeah, there were a few further comments that uh, we would like to see multiple objectives, actually. Um, 
Then uh, a question about the group title, because the group title specifically mentions biodiversity. However, um, in part of our community, especially in the natural collections, um, the scope is both biodiversity and geodiversity. So uh, we asked whether people see that as a problem. Uh, and most people uh, answered that um, the title does not need to change uh, and the group can work both on biodiversity and uh, geodiversity related data integration issues. However, there is also a group that believes that uh, the, the group should really focus on biodiversity only and that geo collections are out of scope uh, of this, uh, this group. Um, and very few people thought that we actually should, uh, should change, um, change the focus. Okay. So um, we can discuss a little bit uh, how, uh, how to deal with this. Um, my proposal would be that uh, we do not change the title on the group. We focus the group mainly on, on biodiversity uh, data integration issues. But if there are people who would like to work uh, on uh, issues that, uh, that um, uh, span also um, DO collections, um, then uh, we, uh, and if that does not fit in any of the other uh, interest groups in RDA, then uh, we just allow that, uh, that also to, uh, to happen in this group. Okay, um, then uh, we asked uh, suggestions for experts to become member of uh, this interest groups and uh, a few names were mentioned. Um, so I would propose that we just uh, just contact uh, these people and see if they would like to become a member of the group. Um, uh, also, it was, uh, it was mentioned uh, that um, uh, representatives of, uh, of infrastructures, uh, biodiversity infrastructures like DBIF and IDIC Bio, but also other infrastructures uh, like Data One, uh, LTR, and Map of Life, um, ALA was mentioned, NEON was mentioned, Biocase, um, and even uh, technical providers like Amazon um, and Google Earth Engine uh, were mentioned. Uh, and people would like to see bringing in uh, representatives of these infrastructures in the group as well. And I think we need to discuss how, how we can do that. Um, and then we had a question on uh, what user category uh, people are in and most people who responded to this, uh, this survey were from the uh, research uh, were, were researchers and uh, a lot of them were also involved in technical support, ICT and information management. Okay, we have about half an hour left now for uh, discussions. So I would like now to uh, to have these discussions. I'll go back to uh, my documents. So now let's let's open the the notes document. Actually, I think that's more useful. Okay, I will stop sharing my screen because you probably all have that notes document there. So the first thing um, to discuss is how can we get participation of these infrastructures? Who would like to make a comment on that? Roger, this is Gil Nelson. Um, I mean, we won't, I think Bio certainly wants to make a commitment. I don't know what that means yet, but um, I mean, we're certainly very interested in this whole issue and, and working closely with you guys and, and Disco and also others, so. Okay. That sounds good. Anybody else? Yeah, Vader, can I say something? Yes. So, I would like to make a, a general comment here that I hope it will be useful because I think what we, uh, and I think we need to get it out of the way very early in this discussion, so that what we should do is not see this group or this forum 
as an overhead, as an additional space where basically we need to undertake more uh, work than our existing very, very heavy schedules across all your organizations, your projects, um, and the other fora in which we all discuss these things. I think my experience with RDA is that the groups, especially the domain specific groups, become extremely successful when they manage to bring the discussions that they have within their domains, within their disciplines, and open up those discussions, benefiting from the fact that they interact with another 90 groups that bring potentially expertise, experience, um, and people with all of that into their existing discussions, into their existing challenges, is into their existing agendas. So I think what we should do um, is really look inside the community. What are those things we already discuss? We undertake as work, either within the projects or within the Alliance or the biodiversity uh, knowledge or uh, the groups that, for instance, we have between IDIC Bio, ALA, DISCO, GBIF, um, or within TADWIC, and I think especially within TADWIC, and see what those activities make sense to bring into RDA because we can benefit, first of all, from what it is there as knowledge. And secondly, we can contribute to a more generic discussion um, uh, that uh, take place in our day. So let's not try to see what else we can do, but try to see how this group can underpin existing work. Okay. Sounds very good. Um, do you think that uh, the group should um, should be a, um, a joint group with with Tetwick? That would be a possibility. I, I think I think we can follow, and I will stop here. I think we can follow the successful example that we had with the RDA Tetwick uh, on group on 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 attribution, yep. um, and and spin out activities from the interest group into working groups that follow this example, not only with TADWIC, it might be with other organizations that, that have the resources and have the personnel to work on these issues. So yeah, I, I think it's a very good example, but we don't necessarily need to rebrand the whole interest group into a joint TADWIC RDA interest group. Okay. Um... Before we continue, uh, can everybody make make notes of the discussions in the document, please? Uh, so who would like to comment on this? So there are a few ideas already uh, for um, for working groups. Uh, under this interest group um, that, um, that that underpin that idea, uh, Dimitris, uh, I think. Uh, like working on uh, open digital specimens uh, is one. And um, I think there was an older suggestion as well uh, on, on minimum um, standard for um, digitization uh, levels. Uh, this is work that is already uh, being done, um, but uh, it could continue and it could leverage from, from this group to, um, to interoperate with, with, with other um, RDA developments. Any further comments on that? What can we do with you? Yes. What can we do with you? Can you speak up a little more? What can we do with you? Yeah, I don't think that was addressing us. No. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, Donuts? Yeah, for your kind of pondering the idea we had long time before again about publishing and making sure that observation data are properly published and you know from a scholarly publishing point of view and that we could convince publishers essentially to 
include some semantics in publishing so data can exactly flow into Catalog of Life or other biodiversity uh, databases. So there is some effort in that for a long time now. And there are examples, but maybe we can broaden this a bit and get more people involved. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good suggestion. Further comments? So, Walter, there is a, um, from Deborah, um, a, um, a comment that says we could make a list of initiatives that are involved or know how uh, um, categorize semantics, collections, ecosystem services, etc. Um, yeah. Basically, to document who is working on what, basically, if I understand that correctly, so that we can see how this group can plug into one of those or many of those activities basically how, how can be used as a vehicle for some of those activities and serve the needs of those um, initiatives yeah that sounds like a very good idea maybe we can we can uh, make a start already in the in the notes documents um, so people can already start entering um, this in the document I see that many people find this, uh, this a good idea. Okay. So the question is how would we do this? How we can, we, we can, we can set up like a, a survey to go around the community and collect current activities around data mobilization around data management, publication, uh, listening to what Donut said, um, um, uh, uh, um, and open apps, interoperability. So what, what are we really working on? And I think already Tadwick, for instance, has a list of working groups, sorry, task groups there, that already undertake certain activities. So I think we can bring those already in the list and see what makes sense, for instance, to continue working on within or with uh, within RBA with Tadwick? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe maybe the work Quentin is leading, for instance, um, on people or um, I'm just thinking out loud. But um, it's obvious that there are so many things happening. Um, just registering them in a way yeah. that we understand the the extent of the activities of the community, I'm not talking about the whole area, I'm talking about our community, the, that would be extremely useful so we understand how we, we come into this, how we plug into this, how we bring the RDA expertise into one of those things. Yeah, uh, she, she, do you see that as a one-time activity or do you see that as something that uh, we should maintain and continuously update? Well, we can definitely start with doing it once and see if it works. Mm -hmm. and, and if we see that's a useful exercise, um, we can continue. I mean, um, early on, Tadwick had a list of, that's completely outdated, a list of organizations working on different, was categorized. I don't know even if, if that list is even available anymore. It was in the old Tadwick website. Um, but, um, but this can be a bit more structured, um, a bit more granular in terms of understanding really the things we're working on. Um, so, but we will need some kind of a categorization, some kind of a high level structure on this, because otherwise it would be just difficult to group things together and, 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 and navigate this activity, landscape of activities within our community. So what do other uh, people in the group think about this? Is there anybody who would like to take the lead on this? Do we should we use a survey or should we use a, a, a Google Doc or the the wiki that we have in the group for that? Well, a list, it's Alex. A list is already beginning to appear in the uh, the bottom half of the the Google Doc already. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, 
you know, we could, you know, quickly in the background while the rest of this call goes on, we could actually expand that list quite a long way if people want to type directly in there. I'm not sure it needs its uh, own separate activity though. Okay. What do other people think? Uh, do you hear me? Uh, my connection is really unstable. I'll try to talk stable here. And maybe we could, uh, if you don't hear me, let me know, please. We could take this list we are building and send it to, to the group to be able to, to complete it. And we could separate it in different uh, subjects. I'm not sure how to do that. Okay. Um, okay. I will propose then that um, uh, we, we, we create this uh, list as much um, as possible right now in the meeting. Um, and then uh, after after this, uh, this session, uh, we as chairs so will we'll have a look at that and try to restructure it a little bit. And um, then allow for some further additions uh, uh, by the by the group members that could not participate in in this meeting. But one one thing about it, I think it's important not just to um, register the overall strategic missions or overall work plans that span across years for an infrastructure or for a project, but really focus on the things that are happening now. So the work that is happening now or in the next year. Because what we need to understand is how we bring the working group or the interest group in, in, um, in assistance rather than just saying, okay, overall, you know, this is what I want to achieve in five years or 10 years time. That's not very relevant to what we want to do, I believe now. Yeah. And then we can, we can also, I think, create a very specific roadmap for the next 12 months uh, on things that we, uh, we can use this, this group for in relation to these activities. So I think that would make it very tangible. Okay, other comments? Lawrence? Lawrence Lennon? It's Larry. Larry? Can I ask how often uh, you think this group will meet in this fashion? Because that might be uh, one thing, one way to think about what you're going to do with these groups. I'm thinking of, of other groups I run in RDA where you have um, uh, routine presentations from specific projects or specific connections and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know what people think about that. Um, we could... Um, so we, we could at least uh, meet uh, in, in the plenary sessions, but it would be helpful if we meet more figures like that, especially if we have uh, uh, very tangible uh, topics to work on. Uh, Quentin? Yeah, I mean, one thing that just occurred to me and, and seeing this many people here with this interest is that when we have standards to review and when there are discussions going on about uh, standards such as Darwin Core, which is obviously very relevant to uh, biodiversity data integration, we very rarely get much of a response from anybody. Um, and so I will just want to encourage everyone here to um, get a GitHub account, go and follow uh, the GitHub for Darwin Core, and get involved in some of those discussions uh, because it's, that's where good standards development really works is in those discussions and getting different use cases from different people. Yeah. And where we can, can use this group for is um, uh, to, to make sure that that standard development that's ongoing uh, in, in Tetwick, that we can um, get an adoption of, of, uh, of these standards in, within our uh, community 
uh, and also cross domain. So um, I think we can use this group uh, to um, to uh, because that's that's one of the comments that often made uh, that we we have these standards, but um, um, a lot of these standards are um, not very well known or or hardly used. Um, uh, especially outside our community, uh, with an exception of, of Darwin Core, uh, and and we can we can work on that. Other people. Well, I, I, it's Alex again. I, I think yeah. at least one interesting topic of discussion, bearing in mind the comments Demetrius made earlier about, you know, bringing our domain-specific challenges into the wider, you know, forum of 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 the research data alliance and uh, you know, benefiting from that wider discussion and also contributing into it is to look at some of the other key strands of uh, work that are going on with RDA, uh, within RDA, um, more generically, and to, to start to discuss in this interest group how that might affect our particular domain of, uh, of biodiversity data, and I would suggest also geo, geodiversity data. And I would, uh, you know, I would draw attention to, um, you know, the work that's uh, been done originally in the data foundation and terminology group and in the data fabric group, um, the work around kernel information profiles, the work uh, that's beginning to be introduced now into, into RDA on fair digital objects. I think you know broadening out the discussion you know within the biodiversity domain about um, you know the opportunities and the impacts of those kind of wider developments for us might be interesting uh, interest group topic. Okay. Are there some other topics or um, uh, use cases that you um, can think of right now already or that you are working on um, where you think that may be um, of interesting uh, to, to address in this interest group? Nobody, I see in uh, in the in the notes already a few things. I think uh, Donald, you you were mentioning liberating data from uh, from legacy uh, publications. Yeah, I mean we work on that for many years now, so that's definitely an important issue. But I think probably beside making use of all. Uh, the really big data on biodiversity, which is imprisoned in, in our literature. I think the really important point is that we have to figure out how we can prevent in the future to imprison our data. That means how can we publish in a sense that the moment we publish it, everybody has access to that. So that goes back to the digital specimen. How can you cite a specimen? How can you cite people? How can you cite... Uh, earlier publications and I think this is probably as much important as much important than going back to the old literature to prevent that we create more old literature and I think this group could really help a little bit to disseminate this this notion okay Dimitris? Yeah, I, I, I would agree. I, and I think actually what, what Donna just suggested is fits very well with, with what, what 
um, Alex suggested before. And I, I think I see the community, and it might be me, but I see the community really putting a lot of effort over the last few months, maybe years, in, in really more persistently, more robustly identifying those entities that we need to identify, not only going back into the backlog of stuff, but also changing the practices through which we are able to persistently and robustly identify entities of biological value within our domain. Uh, and that includes specimens, that includes um, literature, that includes um, taxonomic entities, that includes all of those data types that we um, work with or generate. And I think I, I see this more and more coming up from different points of view with different um, spins being an extremely important aspect of how we, and I'm not saying we haven't been working on this, but, but I feel now it's like the timing is right to really take, take more bold steps and what, what Donald was saying, how we influence, for instance, by putting out there a common voice about the best practices or the policy, how then subsequently we influence stakeholders like the publishers, like uh, non-biodiversity infrastructures that however they need to refer to biodiversity data uh, to adopt those policies to make um, and, and, and allow that link between data entities to be more streamlined. Um, I, I feel that the community is definitely focusing into those aspects. I mean, people as well, you heard uh, Quentin working on this. So I feel the community really is geared towards that part of our needs quite um, prominently. So maybe we should, um, we should ride this wave um, and, and go along and see how, we, how the group can, can support this but definitely recognize it. Okay. I think that's a, that's a good comment. Demetrius, you might just want to look in the notes and make sure I captured what you said accurately. Will do, thanks Alex. Because I couldn't type as fast as you spoke. I wonder uh, why. I see that we have a quickly growing list in the in the notes. Um, there are a few things mentioned there, like um, BHL. Is there somebody from BHL in the in the group? Yes, yes, I'm in, I'm from BHL. This is Connie. Are there any things that you are currently working on that you um, would like to see taken forward in this in this group? Well, I think just making sure that um, we can extract from BHL everything that we need um, as we move forward. Uh, we're working on on doing some um, image liberation and some other things, but um, I mean, we we would like more direction from the community too as to what 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 is most important to get out of BHL. We're looking at trying to extract specimen information and and um, and other other smaller portions of data. And we need standards. <laughs> of course we need standards. <laughs> uh, Dimitris? Sorry. You just had your hand still. Okay. Um, Heimo writes, out of discussions with folks from the monitoring climate resource domains, the position of biodiversity data in data cubes is unclear. Standards and pipelines need to be identified. Um, can you elaborate on that, uh, Heimo? Yeah, we had discussions with Climate Change Research Institute in Vienna and people doing uh, work on the uh, currently so on the air pollution monitoring sites and the position of the biodiversity data in this in this context is to me is not clear yet so in data cubes the position so the occurrence of a species or, or a plant which is uh, documented by objects or observations inside the data cube to having a temporal uh, a temporal scale uh, in our uh, in our data 
be exposed and reusable for uh, for these two domains this is not clear to me so this is might be one of the one of the points that could be discussed also inside uh, this this working group uh, this this interest group hi mo uh, here's Barbara. Um, this is exactly what we are discussing in iAdopt. <laughs> so this mm -hmm. is, uh, I think it's fine. Yeah, I think you should really think what is needed, but then come back to us and we, we are the, yeah, we are more the terminologists together thinking about how to solve this, but we need really uh, the, the scientists of uh, bio, the biodiversity researchers to, yeah, to look at it and refine it and um, clarify the requirements they have. Hmm. So, so that's a good outcome of this meeting for me again to, to find a hook into this into these topics. No? But the point I, is, I, how should we put the yeah. interest group? I think Donald was first. Donald? Yeah, I, I just a little step back on the publication side. So one thing I could Im imagine is that we look at publications in a different way. So right now we publish and that's it. But we should probably look at this more into in the term of research data life cycle that you have part of a publication or a statement about some specimens or some results that can be reused afterwards. That means we have to publish in a sense rethink our publishing, especially make sure we can cite these specific statements, being a triple or like a treatment or other parts of a publication. And I think mm -hmm. that's probably something we should would be interesting to consider here because that in a way would allow to take a specimen and make statements about specimens in publications or here a gene sequence, which is based on this specimen which has these conclusions or this distribution which has been summarized in this publication. Okay, Alex? Um, yeah, going back to the remark that Haimo just made, um, I think it's a very important remark and we, 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 we should not step over it. Um, I think there are at least a few of us in this call uh, who would recognize that there is a big disconnect between um, what I might call the, the traditional biodiversity informatics work that, 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 that goes on in the domains which are uh, you know, largely represented by the people in, in, in this call and the whole um, portfolio of work that is going on on essential biodiversity variables that's being driven by, by Geobon. Um, and at least several of us here were involved in a in the Globus B project where where we we looked at some of that. But I feel that uh, since the Globus B project came to an end, there has been a drifting apart again, and uh, there are some very different things going on in the uh, in in the EBV world from from what's what's going on in 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 uh, the worlds closer to each of us. And I wonder whether this interest group ought to be. Um, thinking about how that problem can be tackled and addressed and uh, and I noted early in some of the um, the chat comments there was a, a comment from uh, Bernard I don't know if he's still in the call I don't have my uh, list of participants fully available um, who said he was interested from the um, from the policy point of view about how biodiversity data is is contributing into 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 IPBES and uh, that, that sounds to me like a, you know, a, a topic for this group. Okay uh, so a number of topics have been uh, be mentioned uh, I'm mindful of the time uh, first of all I would like everybody who is interested in, in helping out in uh, writing the revised charter to, to put your name and uh, on the on the bottom of the, the notes documents uh, I think we should continue work on um, on on discussing um, these these topics. Uh, so that brings me back to uh, to the question that Larry was was mentioning. Uh, how how often are we going to uh, to meet? Um, maybe we can we can um, we can have a follow up meeting on on this one. Um, in between, we we can work out uh, some topics to discuss further in that 
in that next meeting. Um, so maybe we can can have a meeting in in a month or so. Uh, what do people think about that? I think, Walter, this is something the the coaches can organize and see, take the temperature and see how ready we are to have another meaningful meeting. Okay. So let's discuss that um, further. And uh, we will com communicate that, uh, that further in the group. Um, this meeting um, will be recorded and uh, we will try uh, to publish that also in the RDA uh, website for the people who could not, uh, not be here uh, today and who are uh, members in, uh, in the group. Okay, um, so I think we have to, to end here. Uh, I thank everybody uh, for their participation in the, in the discussions and um, Let's see how we, uh, we can continue this, um, now we started it, and uh, how we can get to, uh, to further revise um, the, the, the task for this, uh, for this interest group, so that we can have that established uh, before the next plenary session. Okay, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Scott, for pulling thank this you. together. Bye, bye, bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. bye.